This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hi, today we'll learn on how to plan and execute these plans in a complex case. I'll take you through a challenging case and share with you the process of decision making and the reasons for making these decisions through the procedure. Here we have an 8 year old man who has a, a mature cataract with loose zonules which is evidenced by this mild fake of the slit lamp and a small rigid pupil secondary to pseudoexfoliation. The goal is to ensure that the cataract is extracted without compromising the integrity of the capsular bag and with minimal damage to the coronal endothelium. In this case, I have consciously made a decision to do manual SICS and my plan is to use iris hooks to dilate the pupil mechanically and then use a CTR to stabilize the bag. So let's see how things go. I begin by fashioning a self-sealing sclerocorneal tunnel and I'm stabilizing the globe by holding on to the posterior groove which I've uh, created intentionally for this purpose. The scleral incision is around 1.5 mm posterior to the limbus and the tunnel is being uh, done using an angled crescent blade. I usually avoid using any cautery and the continuous irrigation by my assistant ensures good visibility. I'm making a slightly larger sclerocorneal tunnel since I'm anticipating a large bulky nucleus. We can see that the shadow behind the pupil on the lens, there's a small space behind the uh, between the iris and the lens, is hinting at the existence of a zonular weakness. Once the scleral tunnel is created, I stain the anti-capsule using trepan blue. I also try to inject it under the pupil, hoping that the underlying unexposed anti-capsule is also stained. The antechamber is then entered through the main incision, the corneal end of the tunnel is extended laterally. It's important to ensure that the inner lip of the tunnel always runs parallel to the limbus to maintain a volvular nature of the incision. My next step is to mechanically dilate the pupil using hooks. I am making these limbal paracentesis incisions. I prefer to make them a little posterior as this prevents the tenting of the iris when, when the uh, hooks are pulled back. I am intentionally using capsular hooks instead of the iris hooks in this particular case so that I can use the same hooks to stabilize the bag if the need arises as I am anticipating a loose bag in this case. Introducing these hooks is not difficult at all, you just need to get used to it. Uh, initially, I just engage the pupillary margin and avoid overstretching them at this stage itself. So, my plan is to use uh, initially four hooks and uh, these are the four hooks which are being placed now. And I intend to use one more hook to the main incision later on.
So once the four hooks are in place, now I stretch the pupil by pulling at each of these hooks. Now next moving on to uh, creating the rexus. So as I'm trying to make the initial puncture in the capsule, I can feel the lens wobbles a bit. And it's clear that I'm dealing with an eye which has got significant zonular weakness. Now it's critical for me to get a bigger sized capsular excess, otherwise the capsular bag may get damaged uh, and the pre-existing zonular weakness can get enhanced when you're trying to prolapse the nucleus out of the bag. So my first goal is to ensure that uh, we have a decent sized uh, rexus. Otherwise, in such cases, it's not unusual to find an unintentional intracapsular extraction happening. And typically in such eyes, owing to the zonular laxity, we usually end up having a smaller rexus than what we aimed at. So I, I feel that I need a bigger rexus than what I have now. Uh, to aid better visualization, I introduce another hook through the main incision which will help me to see better so that I, I can extend the superior part of the rexus uh, margin a little bit. So once I'm seeing it well, it's easier for me to enlarge the rexus. So once the rexus is done, it's now time to loosen out and separate the nucleus from the capsule. Gentle hydrodissection is done, followed by decompression, and the nucleus is just nudged around to ensure it is free from the bag. So now I need to mobilize the nucleus into the antechamber. And at this step, there is always a chance of exacerbating the zonular weakness. The bag may come out along with the nucleus unintentionally. I use two Sinsky hooks to mobilize the nucleus out of the bag. It is just like wheeling the lens out of the bag. It's important for us to master this bimanual technique of prolapsing the nucleus out of the bag since it comes in handy in such situations. So once the nucleus is out of the bag, I need to create some space. I'm using Cohesi OED uh, in front of the lens and also behind the lens uh, just to ensure that we have got enough space for manipulation. At this stage, I free the superior two hooks engaging the pupil and pull them out so that they don't hinder me uh, while extracting the nucleus out. So once it is done, uh, my job is to gen extract the nucleus out to the scleral tunnel. Using a wire vectris under the nucleus and a lens dialer above it, the nucleus is gently extracted out by what we call the sandwich technique. So the nucleus comes out quite easily because the incision was adequately sized and appropriate for it. And once the nucleus is out, we need to deal with the cortex. Uh, at this stage, I need to be careful because there is always a risk of zonal dehiscence in such eyes, even at this stage during cortex aspiration. I decide to insert a CTR at this stage and after forming the bag with OVD, the CTR is gently threaded into the bag.
The intraocular lens is uh, implanted into the back. The capsule hooks remove the ovaries as spread out. So finally, we could implement most of our plans quite well. And if we anticipate the intraoperative difficulties well in advance and prepare well for them, most challenging cases can be dealt well. So hope this helps and thank you for watching this video.